31 employees of a local farm company have been infected by the coronavirus. I think the average American has no concept of how food reaches our table. I think there's a huge disconnect with those of us with shelter in place. From the farms. I started getting lightheaded. My chest starting to hurt. I couldn't really breathe. To the factories. They don't show up back to work. They would be getting fired. Correspondent Daffodil Altan investigates the risk essential workers take to provide America's food supply. How big is this problem? Just in meatpacking alone, over 14,000 of our members have been exposed or contracted COVID-19. 14,000 people. And what can be done to minimize their risk? The Trump administration could do this now. Under the OSHA law, the federal government can issue an emergency regulation. They can do that tomorrow, saying employers must protect workers from COVID-19. Now on Frontline. It doesn't feel like we're essential. It feels like we're slaves. COVID's hidden toll. Cuando yo lo escuché la primera vez que se iban a, a cerrar tiendas, restaurant y todo eso, a mí sí me dio temor. Mi primer pensamiento fue protegernos, no salir de la casa. Si lo que es mi salud, no toco el tema con nadie. Yo tengo células cancerosas. Pero en estos momentos nos hace trabajar más la necesidad que el mismo miedo que tenemos. ¿Ya viene vecino? Sí, no, ah. Pues le encargo vecino porque me tiene aquí en el frío. Ay, pues, ahí voy, falta cinco minutos, que la cuatro. Y nos estamos titiriteando aquí de frío, vecino. Apúrese, por favor. Aquí vengo llegando, vecina, Rosana. Acá viene pelos. Mira el niño, ¿qué te dije? <risa> Buenos días. Parecemos sardinas enlatadas en esa van. 15 personas que vamos. Ahí sí no hay que respetar tus tres pies. Ahí es de que todos como buenos hermanos juntitos y bien apachurraditos. Y así soy una trabajadora esencial. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros cosechamos la verdura que la mayoría de las personas en, en este país ocupa en su mesa. Nosotros salimos al campo, nos exponemos. No somos robots. No somos gente que porque trabajamos en el campo no nos vamos a contagiar. Nos vamos a contagiar. Millions of farm workers now still in the fields across the nation. Agricultural workers testing positive for COVID-19 is on the rise. At least 10,000 meatpacking workers across the country have been infected. Often facing crowded and unsanitary conditions with little or no protective gear, their lives and the nation's food supply are at risk. As millions of Americans were sheltering in place over the past months, we began looking at the toll the coronavirus was taking on those who cannot stay home. Agricultural workers, many of them undocumented, who were deemed essential to the nation's food supply. I've been reporting in this community for years, and as the annual harvest was starting in California this spring, 
I was hearing from workers who were daily having to choose between their jobs and their health. Todos los campesinos estamos haciendo un sacrificio grande por necesidad, sobre todo es por necesidad, por hambre, por ver a nuestra familia comer y por tener donde vivir. Cynthia Hernandez is one of the few workers out of dozens we spoke to who agreed to go on camera. She's a broccoli picker in the Salinas Valley, a region in California that produces most of the country's leafy greens. In addition to having cancer, Cynthia has diabetes, both of which put her at high risk for complications if she contracts COVID-19. No nos están dando lo esencial para protegernos. Mal, espérense. She works for a contractor that supplies workers to farms in the area. She told me she's expected to bring her own mask to work. Nosotros que estamos trabajando y tenemos tantas deudas y cuentas que pagar, el dinero a veces no nos alcanza ni para comprar una sola mascarilla que en la tienda no lo dan. Una sola mascarilla, tres, cuatro dólares. Y es desechable. When we met Cynthia in April, there were no required COVID protections for farm workers, beyond general rules about masks and social distancing. Even now, companies don't have to tell workers about outbreaks. If one farm worker gets sick, you're going to get a crew, which is typically 30 people sick. And if each of those people goes out, they're going to get three to four other people, because that's the infection rate. Uh, and so the thing snowballs. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Max Cuevas runs a network of clinics in the Salinas Valley that primarily serves farm workers. And so with my staff, I told them we need to plan with whatever little resources we have we need to plan to make sure that those resources are in fact available. So we thought, let's jump in. Let's begin making masks. Just before dawn, Dr. Cuevas's team was meeting workers as they caught rides to the fields. Buenos días. Somos de la clínica de salud. Estamos regalando máscaras. ¿Le gustaría? OK. ¿Va a venir más gente? Somos de la clínica de salud, estamos dando máscaras. ¿Le gustaría una? ¿Le gustan máscaras? Estamos regalando máscaras. Una para ti, una para tu esposa. Máscaras, ¿quieren máscara? Estamos dando máscaras. When our state and federal governments announced that the farm worker was a part of the essential workforce, included with health care, first responders, police, it's not your middle class essential worker that people are talking about. This essential worker a lot of them do, in fact, live in fear. They don't want people to know that they're here undocumented. There's that fear of, I could be gone tomorrow if I'm taken away. And what's going to happen to my family? It's a horrible kind of fear that people learn to live with. You try to assure them that, don't be afraid of that one right now. Be afraid of the virus. By mid-April, the first cases of COVID-19 had been identified in the Salinas Valley, and there were increasing fears about it spreading among farm workers and their families. In my family, we are 11 in total in our house, and the part are four children. Two children with asthma. And I'm worried. It was around this time that we met Rosa Orellana, a truck driver who was worried about what might happen in her family of produce workers. Este, no llegar a la casa por 15 días eh, era la manera de proteger a, de proteger a, a mi familia. Pero pues tengo primos que viven en casa que tienen que trabajar en, en la lechuga. Rosa's cousins were living with her family and working for a large grower called Tanamora and Antel. One of her cousins, Osmar, said that although the company gave them masks and gloves, 
it was still difficult to do the work and not get close. Eh, como somos bastantes personas este, en, en la cuadrilla, no se puede andar este, pues, una distancia retirada, siempre os toca andar cerca. En el trabajo no, pues ya este, va a lo, usar los mismos baños uno, este, va a tomar agua al mismo lugar, entonces, pues donde vamos todos a tomar agua y al mismo baño, todo eso, no hay separación. Y le pregunté, le digo, ¿lo separan ahí? Dijo, no, vamos todos juntos en el autobús. En ese momento pensé, wow, va a estar difícil controlar a la enfermedad porque están todos juntos. Ya andaban pues varias personas este, con síntomas. Pero nosotros los rateábamos con otro muchacho para el trabajo y este, ya andaba mal. También con mucha calentura este, y tenía tos también. Osmar says he heard through co-workers that someone on his crew had tested positive for COVID-19, but his supervisors were not giving them any information about what was happening. No los habían dicho nada, nomás los dijeron que, este, que si nos sentíamos mal, que nos quedáramos en casa. Tenía miedo. Este, estaba muy estresado en el trabajo pensando pues si, pues, si los podíamos contagiar de la enfermedad. Pues todos estábamos con pánico, la, la verdad. Without information and afraid they would get sick, his crew collectively decided to stop working. Osmar went home to self-quarantine, but he was already coming down with symptoms. Este viernes yo llegué a la casa, toqué la puerta a, a Osmar y le pregunté, este, ¿está enfermo? Y me dijo, Sí, tengo calentura. Y ya él nos comentó de que en su cuadrilla alguien había salido positivo. En ese momento se te pues, baja la sangre del cuerpo y no sabes, te pones frío. Sabíamos que iba a pasar, pues entonces fue que decidimos nosotros ir a hacer la, la prueba. Osmar went to get tested along with his wife and brother, who also worked at the company. Este, primero le llamaron a mi esposa, este, le, pues, le dijeron que ella había dado positivo. Y luego esto, nos llamaron a mí y a mi hermano y nos, pues, nos dieron la misma información también que, este, que habíamos dado positivo. Several other coworkers also tested positive. They were among the first farm workers in Monterey County to be diagnosed with COVID-19. Entramos en pánico porque no sabíamos cuánto tiempo tenían de estar infectados y cuántos en nuestra casa podíamos estar infectados. Los niños, mi mamá, mi hermano, no sabíamos. Somos 11 personas, cuatro niños. Y si todos estamos infectados, ¿quién va a cuidar de nosotros? ¿O qué irá a pasar? ¿Qué, qué vamos a hacer? During this time, we were hearing that there were dozens of cases at Tanamora and Antel. So we wanted to talk to the company about the infections and what they were doing to protect workers, but they did not respond to our repeated requests for an interview. Local produce giant Tanamora and Antel confirm one of their employees have tested positive for COVID-19. The company publicly confirmed only one COVID case and said they'd sent those in contact with the sick worker home with paid leave. When we asked local health officials in Monterey County to confirm the number, they said they do not release information about infections at specific companies. We received similar responses from other counties in the state. In fact, it was hard to find much information at all about the overall number of farm workers getting sick. I believe local governments, I believe counties, especially ag-based counties, should be releasing any and all data related to uh, infections, outbreaks, uh, because uh, without that information, it's uh, nearly impossible to try to get this virus under control. California Assemblymember Robert Rivas grew up in farm worker housing, and his district includes the Salinas Valley. He told me that even the little data that is available about who's getting sick points to a disproportionate toll in the farm worker community. Latinos make up 39, almost 
40 percent of the statewide population. But they now account for more than half of all COVID cases in California. And so certainly that is well above the representation of Latinos statewide. Uh, and so trying to understand, you know, how this is impacting our farm worker communities uh, is, in, is, is, is incredibly important. And that's been a growing concern in agricultural communities experiencing outbreaks across the country. 31 employees of a local farm company have been infected by the coronavirus. Southern Valley says 100% of the employees at Henderson Farm have tested positive. Scott's Strawberry and Tomato Farm shut down after more than two dozen of its employees tested positive for COVID-19. This is a once in the century pandemic and uh, our workers, they deserve to have laws in place that are gonna reflect these incredible challenges that we face. Our laws need to reflect uh, this new reality uh, and something like disclosing potential outbreaks on the work site uh, needs to become the standard uh, in our state and really in our country. Agricultural workers in the U.S., especially the undocumented, have long been among the most exploited and the lowest paid. In our years of reporting on farm workers, we found abuses involving children who've been forced to work against their will and women who've been sexually assaulted on the job. As the pandemic was taking hold, we heard from one of our longtime sources, Maricruz Ladino, a farm worker in Salinas who we first met seven years ago when she shared her story of being sexually assaulted by a supervisor. Hablame del momento que estamos que están viviendo ahora mismo los trabajadores del campo. Ellos están sufriendo ahorita el hay dos están entre medio de dos aguas y se quedan en casa para estar protegiéndose a ellos mismos y a su familia o se van a trabajar. She's now a dispatcher for a large lettuce grower and has become an advocate for farm workers by volunteering at a legal aid organization. ¿Te preocupa del hecho de que la gente tal vez tenga miedo de ir al doctor o ir a, al hospital si se sienten mal? Me preocupa el, el temor que está teniendo la gente de ir al doctor. Eh, de, me preocupa el miedo de las personas que no quieren decir que están teniendo algún síntoma por el hecho de que si se quedan callados van a transmitir el, el virus a los demás este, por, por su miedo. Entonces, es el temor de ser deportados, el temor de perder el trabajo y no tener en dónde volver a ir a acomodarme a trabajar. mayor miedo es infectarme, infectarme porque podría ser que al infectarme yo infecte a mi familia y lo más sagrado para mí es mi familia. As infections were climbing in Monterey County, Cynthia Hernandez told me she was worried about family members who like her also have underlying conditions. ¿Ya está el pozole, mamá? Tenemos que aprender que todavía corremos un riesgo muy grande y que tenemos que tomar la precaución que se nos ha recomendado como cubri, usar este, el cubrebocas. ¿Qué tanto uno se cuida aquí de no salir, de ir a las tiendas con, uh -huh. con máscara oh. para que, por ejemplo, los muchachos que nosotros traemos cortando no les den protección, no les den nada de eso y uno no sabe a dónde van, con quién se juntan?
Este es parte de mi tratamiento que tengo que tomar todos los días. Ah. Con los preparo casi para toda la semana, puesto que trabajo en el campo. Tengo uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once. Entre estos medicamentos tengo una versión que es um, de mis quimio, como de mis quimioterapias. Pues desafortunadamente nadie en mi casa puede trabajar más que yo. While the coronavirus was taking hold in the fields, it was already racing through food processing plants across the nation. The coronavirus pandemic is closing down meat packing facilities across the country. At least 22 meat processing plants already shut down in this country. Six we heard about a growing outbreak a few hours from Salinas at one of the biggest meat processors in the U.S. The Central Valley Meat Company in Hanford, that's about 30 miles south. Central Valley Meat employs around 700 people at its plant in Kings County. The company has a history of violating health and safety codes and has been cited for animal abuses, as seen in this undercover footage. In the last decade, it's had two beef recalls and been shut down three times. When the virus appeared at the plant in April, workers told us that at first the company did nothing to protect them. When it started, they denied everything. It, it was people getting suspended for showing up with a face mask. A couple of people were actually coughing and they were, wore the mask just because they were coughing and they got sent home. They used the phrase, you're scaring the employees, your coworkers. Management will say that it's just rumors that someone had posted on social media. A lot of people started missing, and then they started calling them and threatening them about their jobs. They didn't show up to back to work. They would be getting fired. These two employees spoke to us on the condition that we not disclose their identities because they were afraid of losing their jobs. In the Central Valley, at least 138 employees tested positive for COVID-19 at a meet. They said it wasn't until the outbreak made the local news that the company began to implement safety measures. After everything came out on the news, everybody's like kind of panicking. After the outbreak, they started separating us in um, different tables apart. And then they were providing us with face masks because uh, most of us were complaining. We were like, we need to protect ourselves. According to the workers, more people kept showing up sick every day. People were going in sick, fever, throwing up, coughing. They ask you at the gate, do you have any of these symptoms? You tell them, yes, okay, you can go right down and go ahead and work. It's like, shouldn't I go home? No, just go ahead and go to work. They worked inside a plant they say looks similar to this one, and that even as the virus spread, the pressure to keep up production continued. We still see people who had came back who are coughing and sneezing. They don't even cover their mouths because, you know, they're moving constantly because the line's, you know, running fast. And some of them, when they sneeze, the paper towels are kind of far away from them. So some of them, they just wipe it off on their face mask or on their smock. Central Valley Meat declined our repeated requests to discuss the outbreak. But the company has publicly denied threatening to fire workers or punishing them for being out sick. In late April, the company sent a note to employees comparing the outbreak to a normal flu season and saying that the coronavirus is not some cloud floating around waiting to infect someone, and assured employees that nightly cleaning was killing any potential virus residue. Early on in the pandemic outbreak inside plants, it was chaos, it was fear, it was anxiety. I reached out to union leader Mark Lauritsen, who'd been monitoring outbreaks in plants around the country. Nobody knew exactly what they were dealing with. And that just led to, if you were a worker in a meatpacking plant looking for answers, those answers were hard to come by early on in this pandemic. So how, how big is this problem? Just in meatpacking alone in the United States, over 14,000 of our members have been exposed or contracted COVID-19 because of their proximity to work. 14,000 
people. And those are just our members. So you have to, if you look across the entire industry, you're probably looking at a number that's substantially higher than that. And when you have 14,000 of our members that are, are exposed and sick, that's a tremendous stress on the efficiency of the whole food supply chain in this country. And quite honestly, if we want to protect our food supply chain in this country, let's protect those workers. Mr. President, on the food supply chain... In late April, large outbreaks were forcing plants around the country to close down until the president signed an executive order that prompted companies to stay open. We're going to sign an executive order today, I believe, and uh, that'll solve any liability problems. Where when the president said that uh, they weren't going to be closing the meat plants down, everybody got upset because we were just getting ready to close. At least that's what they were telling us. Both of these Central Valley meat employees told us that they tested positive for COVID-19. I started getting lightheaded. My body just started aching. I felt really hot from inside. My chest starting to hurt. I couldn't really breathe. I told my management, I asked them if I could leave and then they were not gonna let me go. They said that if you wanna get tested, you will have to go on your own time. We thought it should be the company's job to take care of us, you know, the workers. By early May, local health officials began testing workers on site. I know a lot of the people that are sick. Some work next to me, some I see at the break room. I'll see them in the restrooms. Uh, yesterday, a co-worker showed up to work and she was coughing. She told us that she was threatened with her job if she didn't show up to work. Production at the plant never stopped, even as the community around it developed one of the fastest infection growth rates in the country. No, the company never closed. They didn't even shut down for not even a day. Even though it was 40 people working, we were still killing cows and still working. Every day we go to work, we're thinking about the coronavirus, if we're gonna catch it again, who's gonna catch it, is it on the walls, is it on the product, is it on the equipment we use. Up till today, I'm still going to work, even though I'm positive right now. It doesn't feel like we're essential workers. It feels like we're slaves. Nearly 200 workers at the company have tested positive for COVID-19, making it one of the largest outbreaks in the state. And around the country, it's estimated that at least 35,000 meatpacking workers have been infected, with more than 100 deaths. With a crisis escalating, state and federal agencies began issuing workplace safety guidelines to employers. Central Valley Meat told us in a statement that they're now following that guidance, but the guidelines are all voluntary. What that means is if an employer doesn't want to do it, it's just guidance, you don't have to do it. And that's not fair to those people that work in that industry who need to have a safe workplace. The fact is, in, in this industry, there are 65 of our brothers and sisters that passed away, and they passed away because government agencies have failed. The federal agency that oversees workplace safety, OSHA, declined to speak with us, but said in a statement that they're taking steps to address unsafe workplaces and that the voluntary guidelines were enough to protect workers against COVID-19. David Michaels, the head of OSHA under President Obama, disagrees. The evidence is very clear that recommendations aren't working. The numbers of cases of COVID-19 in factory workers and farm workers continues to rise. The recommendations are out there, but we know that they're not being followed enough. There are some employers who are trying to do a good job, but a lot of them, you know, frankly, aren't. What can federal OSHA do right now? Well, the first thing the federal government should do is issue requirements, issue a regulation saying every employer must have a plan to make sure workers are protected. Because if we don't protect workers on the job, we're not going to stop this epidemic, and workers will pay the high price of that. The Trump administration could do this now. Under the OSHA law, the federal government can issue an emergency regulation. They can do that tomorrow.
saying employers must protect workers from COVID-19. Early on in the pandemic, Mari Cruz Ladino told us that unlike many companies she'd heard about, her employer was being aggressive about implementing protections. En donde yo trabajo, en la compañía que yo trabajo, nos están um, atendiendo, nos están proveyendo todo lo necesario para que para cuidarnos, cuidarse ellos, cuidarnos a nosotros y para que nosotros cuidemos a nuestra familia. I asked her boss at Field Fresh Farms about the safety measures they were taking. We are. We had that question from the get-go. People were like, is it a safe place to be? We sanitize daily, obviously. Just our normal food safety protocol, we're above and beyond all the third-party certifications we have just on a day-to-day -day basis of what we have to do to produce a food item and a package. So really the only step above for us was physically putting face masks on. Part of it is you don't want them going home, getting their family sick, other members, young kids, elderly at their home. And uh, we don't want the people in the crew getting sick because we, we need a full crew. And if one person gets sick, Maybe the mentality of the rest of them are, maybe it's not a safe place to be, all the aboves. And what about in the fields? What are you doing? Fields, same thing. We are splitting crews, splitting times they come in. We've had some people, we've offered it if they wanted to continue to come in or do a shelter at place. We understand if you want to be at home. And there's a few that chose to stay at home, uh, at least for the two-week period that they initially said they thought it would be. Uh, Were they paid? Were they paid if they sheltered in Those, place? Those are not right now. The people that chose to stay home, they're laid, laid off and whether they're, you know, it's up to them if they want to seek unemployment or not. Um, and again, we haven't had anybody to point that's been reported to be sick anywhere in any, in any one of our entities. Though there have been no known infections at work, Mari Cruz is worried because several relatives have already been infected. día que salgo yo a trabajar, desde que me levanto le doy gracias a Dios por un día más, pero sinceramente tengo sí tengo miedo. Mas no lo he demostrado a ninguno de mi familia ni a mis seres queridos. Quiero que sigan mirando que soy una persona fuerte, pero dentro de mí sí existe el miedo. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Habla Cintia Hernández. Ajá. Porque alguien salió positivo en la cuadrilla de nosotros. Necesito que me explique qué es lo que está pasando. For Cynthia Hernandez, her worst fears seem to be coming true. Este, desafortunadamente, el día de ayer, a mí me dieron la noticia que que mi cuadrilla pusieron en, en cuarentena dos compañeros. Um, uh, ellos tuvieron una convivencia con alguien que dio positivo del, del COVID-19. Yo el día de ayer le exigía a mi mayordomo que qué era lo que iban a hacer y pues él no, no quería contestarme, no quería decirme qué era lo que estaba pasando y Pero yo estoy en todo mi derecho de exigirle a él que, que me informe. Es mi salud y es la salud de mis hijos, el bienestar de mis hijos. Sentía muy mal y más por mi condición. Entonces, pues a eso ahorita venimos a, a, a ver si nos pueden hacer ahorita aquí la, la prueba. ¿Y ¿Cuál es tu nombre y apellido? Cintia Hernández. Ok, ¿y es primera vez? Sí. Okay, so no a a Voy a estar llamando para que le hagan el test a todos en mi casa. 
no quiero que pase más tiempo y seguir arriesgando. Y solamente me siento frustrada porque desafortunadamente tengo que salir a trabajar. Ah, podía a lo mejor quedarme en mi casa muy a gusto, pero nadie me va a pagar los biles. Nadie sabe lo que yo estoy pasando en mi casa para, para verme obligada a salir a trabajar, ¿me entiendes? Over our months of reporting, we heard many stories like Cynthia's about workers feeling pressured by their circumstances and by their employers. One of those employers was Taylor Farms, a multi-billion dollar company in the Salinas Valley. It has 20,000 employees across the country and sells lettuce to retailers like Walmart and Whole Foods. Here at Taylor Farms, the good news is, is food safety has always been a big focus. One thing when the pandemic hit, the company said it was taking all appropriate measures to protect its workers. So a big part of education for us with all of our team members was to help everybody understand that we owe it to each other to keep each other healthy. And as a company, we needed to make sure that people felt comfortable staying home. And so we've been able But when an employee tested positive, at Taylor's flagship organic packing plant in early May, workers told us the company sent a different message. Ese día cuando llegamos había mucha gente murmurando y pues yo me acerqué y pregunté qué es lo que estaba pasando y dijeron que había un compañero uh, que había salido positivo. Sentí que el cuerpo se me puso chinito, pensé en mi familia. Pensé en los compañeros, qué es lo que iba a pasar con todos nosotros. We spoke to this Taylor Farms employee who's concealing her identity because she's afraid of losing her job. Y, y a mí se me ocurrió grabarlo por si ocupaba una prueba. Esto que ha pasado aquí no es, no es, no es el ligero, no es light, es algo grave porque hemos parado dos horas la producción, esto es algo que no se puede hacer. She shot this video on her cell phone of an HR manager addressing employees who had refused to work. Yo me imaginé que la empresa iba a hacer algo que, nos, que no nos iba a dejar entrar a trabajar por lo que estaba pasando. Por esta situación, y lamentablemente hoy estamos en la situación para hacerlo. Todos ustedes podrían hacerlo. No. 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 En eso todos no estuvimos de acuerdo porque en realidad nos estaba corriendo. Eso es lo que todos entendimos y empezó la discusión que por qué nos estaba corriendo si nosotros no estábamos seguros de trabajar ese día. Lamentablemente es algo que yo Y espero, espero que los que decían irse puedan si esta persona estuvo trabajando ocho días atrás con nosotros, de cerca, ¿se imagina cuánta gente nos pudo haber contaminado también? Eso es lo que él no entendía. Y ellos nos decían que que no, que afuera estaba más contaminado que allá adentro, que nos metamos, que allá adentro estaba libre de, de virus. Si por alguna razón el muchacho tiene el virus y tocó algo, eso ya no está ahí porque ya pasaron más de cuatro horas. Es decir, eso allá adentro es el más sano y lo más seguro que pueda hacer. Ok, entonces, necesito que por favor, vos ya están en el reloj, vos ya pusieron. Eso es lo que, lo que nosotros nos disgustó a todos porque nosotros sí queremos trabajar, pero queremos estar seguros. Eso, miren, el producto se va a sacar con nosotros y nosotros. Se saca 
Esta compañía lleva operando 30 años, va a, va a seguir saliendo. Si usted no entra a trabajar, probablemente a mí me despida. Eso, es, eso es lo más lógico. Pero, pero, el otro? producto se va a sacar y ponen otro aquí. Y viene otro. Viene otro y, y, y la compañía sigue funcionando. O sea, la compañía no va a parar por nosotros. Eso, es, eso, es, eso sí se lo garantizo. Pero nosotros tenemos que decir, ok, estoy en condiciones de quedarme una semana sin ingresos mientras el desempleo aplica. Estoy en condiciones de eh, seguir ayudando a mi familia si estoy sin trabajo por una semana. We talked to the manager in the video. He would not go on camera, but said he was trying to keep people safe and stay productive. Taylor Farms also declined to go on camera. In a statement, they said they'd worked hard to maintain the food supply while putting in place expanded health and safety protocols for their employees. In the end, all but a handful of the roughly 250 workers returned to their shift that day. Prácticamente nos metieron como un temor a entrar a trabajar y yo por no perder mi mi trabajo porque ahorita está escaso y yo todos tenemos gastos es lo único que me decidí entrar y poner todo en manos de Dios. We reached out to the head of the association that represents Taylor Farms, as well as other large growers in California. How familiar are you with what happened at Taylor Farms or at Tenemore and Antle? Um, you know, Taylor, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. Tanamura, um, you know, I know what they reported uh, to, to the media based on their statement. Um, so I'm not, I don't know like what goes on within, you know, a, a company. We don't have intel in, in each and every case as to what exactly happened and why and how or what did an employer do in their reaction. But where these come up and we learn about them. And at the end of the day, we almost always learn like that a company where there's an issue, that an issue happened. And we take it upon ourselves to engage them. Valida said his association issued early safety protocols and is part of a unique coalition with local officials, farm worker advocates, and doctors. But he said he's opposed to companies having to publicly disclose their COVID cases. And I think it's important to see context and significance as important because it, it can distract from what the company has done to protect their employees. It can distract from the fact that there, there is no such thing as, as zero risk. And so something may happen and the company may have taken the best, most appropriate steps they could have communicated as clearly and concisely and as frequently as is humanly possible. Um, the employer could have volunteered to provide housing to this employee where there is no requirement to do so, but none of that would get captured. The only thing that the general public would then know and be able to formulate opinion on is that this employer may have done something wrong because here we've associated a negative, which is the occurrence of people that are COVID-19 positive to a particular company. Now, we're- So you're company... saying that uh, putting that information out there would be negative press for the company, just doesn't look good. I think in general, yes. We would expect employers, you know, that, that should have the responsibility to make sure they're clearly communicating with employees to, to educate and help address any fears that, that may result because we're all living in a situation of the unknown. As the coronavirus has continued to spread, Assemblyman Rivas has been pushing for workplace safety measures the companies must follow. I expected more from Cal OSHA, expected more from Federal OSHA uh, to really intervene and to do more in the way of ensuring that there is industry-wide regulations uh, to protect uh, our farm workers. Unfortunately, farm workers um, don't have high-paid lobbyists, which makes the passage of any significant legislation uh, very challenging, you know, to be quite honest. In the meantime, California's Governor Gavin Newsom has stepped in. He's announced measures to help agricultural workers, including enforcing safety guidelines that until now have been voluntary. This is talking about compliance uh, on health and safety in our meatpacking facilities. Uh, one should not have to put their life at risk to go to work as an essential worker. 
the governor is creating strike teams that will inspect work sites in targeted counties and could find companies that are not following the guidelines. Now that we have statewide guidelines in place, uh, now that the governor has made the commitment to enforce those guidelines is a step in the right direction. But Rivas said the state still needs to do more to understand the scope of the outbreak among farm workers. And, and clearly when it comes to COVID-19, uh, this discussion needs to be driven by data. Who's infected? Where are they infected? Why were they infected? We need to do everything we can uh, to acquire the data that's going to help us make informed decisions, but also create and introduce um, legislation to address problems. Some counties are now providing data on agricultural worker infections. And the numbers are alarming. Agricultural workers are three times more likely to get COVID-19 than other workers in Monterey County, according to a new analysis by the California Institute for Rural Studies. And research out of UC San Diego found that in counties across the U.S. where there are more farm workers, more people are dying of COVID-19. I think the average American has no concept of how food reaches our table. We don't know how meat is processed. We have no idea where lettuce comes from. We have no idea how it's harvested. I think there's a huge disconnect with those of us with shelter in place not understanding how those people work and how much they have to work to make a living and to make it profitable for the company that they're working for. As for Osmar Orellana, he ended up spending two weeks in isolation with his wife and brother. Este, estuvimos encerrados desde la fecha del el 10 hasta el 24. O sea, ayer. Sí, está ayer. Acaban de salir. Sí. Y esa es la preocupación pues de uno de este de si de regresar a trabajar, este se vuelve a contagiar de esa enfermedad y Este, pues ahorita como los ha dejado débiles ahorita y volver otra vez a lo mismo, no sabemos qué pueda pasar. Si vamos a poder resistir a la enfermedad otra vez que nos vuelva a dar. Y sí, pues nosotros pues no, no hay de otra que seguir trabajando. Yo en lo personal les recomiendo a ellos de que se esperen una semana más. Porque regresar al lugar donde sabes que pudiste encontrar la muerte ahí no es fácil. Hernández, quería saber los resultados de mi prueba. Tenían que entregármelos supuestamente 48, 72 horas. No me los entregaron y me dijeron que llamara a este número. ¿Cuándo fue que se hizo la prueba que se le hicieron? El martes de la semana pasada. Sí, 
Cintia, su resultado del COVID-19 salió negativo. Muchísimas gracias. Wow. Thank you so much. ¿Algo más que le pueda ayudar? No es todo. Muchas gracias. el campo porque es, es algo que aprendí, es algo que amo, es algo que respeto y es mi trabajo. Es algo que cuando paso en la tienda y veo el brócoli, tal digo, wow, nuestras manos la cortan, nuestras manos la cosechan. pandemia esto no se no se va a acabar hasta que se acabe o que digan ya ya no hay más riesgo y y para eso desafortunadamente parece que, que va para largo For more on this and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's COVID's Hidden Toll is available on Amazon Prime Video.